let you know what's going on. I got something really cool I want to roll out and show you. Uh, but let's, for the time being, let's stand up. Let's worship. Let's <laughs> welcome each other. Let's have church. What do you say? Amen? Why not? This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, devils will have to flee. Who can tell what God will do? Father, I thank you once again for an opportunity to assemble in your name and to worship you and lift you up. Father God, I, I thank you for this beautiful day outside. I thank you for all these beautiful people inside, Father. And I just pray that you'll bless and anoint this time as we dip into your word, as we grow in our faith, as we live out our faith, Father God, and we learn to do so through obedience to your word. Father God, bless this time. Again, it's all for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said. Amen. You could be seated. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, 1030 Saturday morning is Mac Wilson's uh, celebration of life. 
Uh, if you plan on being here, just make sure that uh, you're there on time. It's 1030. Uh, most of the musicians know when to be there. Uh, we're grateful to have Founds checking some things out in this neck of the woods. It's nice to, to have him and Noel and Willie here with us visiting from another church. Um, yeah, give them a, give, they're, they're, they're visitors, right? That's the way we handle it. He's, they've just been a blessing. We, they came and visited us with, uh, uh, on a finger food fellowship night, and it was a really wonderful evening. Not only did we have the finger food and the fellowship, but we even broke out in song with him leading the way on guitar. So we're excited. He's trying things out. He's a lead guitar player, and it just so happens we're in the lead guitar looking business right now. So that's good, right? That's right. I want to tell you something I'm excited about. Sister Jamie and I, Pastor Brian, are trying out something. We want to give you guys a conversation starter, a ministry, if you will. We've printed just a few for the time being to see how this rolls out. But I kind of got the idea from uh, Brother Donald. If you ever met him and talked with him long enough, he's always got a card to give you of encouragement. Some really nice words, some beautiful pictures on it. Kind of took the lead there and wanted to share this with you. I've got a stack of them back there. If you're going to take them, please give them out. If you're not going to take them, that's understandable too. It's not everybody's ministry. Not everybody's cool with the one-on-one. We understand that. But if you take them, take a couple. Try it out. Here's my vision. You have a nice meal at Denny's or Bob Evans, and you have conversation with your server and, and strike up a conversation over everything. And then you turn around and leave something like this. Maybe it's a hint. Maybe it's, where are you doing? Where are you going to church? What's going on in your life? Maybe even end up praying for somebody. So we want to put some of these tools in your hands. That way you can go out and invite people to church and, and let them know we're in the community. That's what, that's what living out our faith is all about, going out and meeting people and, and sharing something in their life that may break up something that's going on in their personal uh, business. I um, want to open up the floor and, and, and ask for prayer requests, concerns. I know that I just went and visited with Miss Barbara this afternoon, two nights ago, Barbara Jones, uh, Mary Lou's her sister. They usually come Wednesday nights and on Sundays. She was taken to the hospital by Mary Lou two days ago with low sodium, um, which I guess affects quite a few things. And, uh, and she's got some intestinal stuff going on. There's a kink in her intestine. So uh, just remember to lift her up in prayer. She was in excruciating pain, is in a much better form today talking up a storm. Uh, wonderful visit with her. We visited for a while. Also, Roy Bridges, a um, man that sits over about by that exit sign uh, here every Sunday. He was the gentleman that was in this really terrible accident out front of Little Manatee Springs. Um, he has two broken arms and a broken neck. And uh, he, from what they told Pastor Ronnie and I, they, he firmed up, you know, as you probably would. His arms aren't broken, but what's happened is they're fractured, and they can't do any kind of surgery because he's already battling neck cancer. And to put him under anesthesia would require a tracheotomy, and they can't do that. So the, the word is they're going to let him heal. The body has a natural resilience for being able to do that, and they believe that everything will be just fine. And then if necessary, they'll they'll navigate surgery in the future. So his name is Roy Bridges and Sister Barbara Jones. Um, I believe we're still praying for Deanna Pedrick, right, Brother Kip? I haven't, I haven't checked in on that situation, but I know uh, there's an ongoing fight there. Anybody else? Kyle. Kyle, K-Y-L-E. Okay. Her daughter and her father both still live in a car after last week on Thursday. They're not, I stopped for me to say that I don't think they're facing cancer. But they need prayers just to get through what they're going through. Certainly. I can't even imagine going through something like that without having. Okay. And it was the, the father and the daughter were killed. terrible situation. You got to be ready. We never know. Sister Dolores. Okay. I want to uh, also remember Katie Whitmore, who's, who's constantly on my mind here of late. She's, she's really been hit with like a, a one-two punch. She, um, her car is broke down. She's waiting on parts. Um, there's also a need for a job. All of the stuff that she shared with us here 
kind of came to fruition and she lost her position at the one of the few jobs that she was able to find. Uh, there's already some uh, PTSD care that's happening in her life and I just a lot of, lot of fiery arrows, darts coming at her and she needs to be lifted up for certain and, and perhaps maybe prayer about how we could maybe facilitate. I know she's reached out and said that she's having trouble getting to the market she needs because of her car being broke down. Um, having trouble, she would love to be able to attend church services. So if, you, if you're feeling uh, that you can do something like this, contact us at the office and we'll definitely re- uh, relay the message for uh, Katie. Any, I'm not sure you'd have to get in the directory. I, I, a couple days ago I had it off the top of my head. Somebody else asked, but I don't remember. Um, but she is in the directory. I think it's right here in Sun City somewhere, maybe on the other end uh, up near 41, if I'm not mistaken. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Over off of West Del Webb. Katie. Katie does? Okay. Yeah. West Del Webb. All right, so that would be almost... Okay. okay. Yeah, just double check or, or call us for information. Yes, Mr. Ruthann. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Show our generosity, show our love. Uh, if we have resources and you can bless somebody, yeah, don't just leave that at the table um, for certain. Thank you, Sister Ruth Ann. I appreciate you clearing that. Anybody else? Miss Connie. There's a division between two of my kids in Tennessee, and I pray that God will break down the barriers between them and they'll become one again. There's anybody can, Sister Connie, he can. Amen. 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 All right, let's um, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this evening again. So grateful for those that would assemble. In your name, to study your word, Father God, your instructions, um, things that we should learn in obedience, Father God. And we just come to you tonight with heavy heart, uh, concerns and prayers for, for those that can't be with us. Some of those that are probably right this very moment watching in on, on, on live from Facebook, Father God. And we want them to be encouraged and hear us call out their name. And that's what we're going to do right now, Father God. We want to lift up Brother Roy Bridges. Uh, he's got a tremendous road ahead of him, Father God. Good news is he could potentially be in rehab in the next couple weeks. But it's, it's all your will, Father God. And we just pray that you'll continue to heal those arms, continue to heal that neck. Uh, deliver him from this cancer. If there's anybody that can, Father God, it's you. We know that. There's power in prayer. And we're lifting him up to you right now. I want to lift up uh, our dear sister, Barbara. Um, and Mary Lou. Bind them up, Father God. There can be, it can be contentious when you're in pain and you're not feeling the best. Uh, we just bind them up as, as sisters, sisters in Christ, sisters, period, Father God. And just uh, heal Sister Barbara's body, this, this sodium issue that she's got on, her intestines. We just take the pain from her, Father God, and get her back to us as quickly as possible. We lift up Sister Deanna and Brother Jim to you with an ongoing fight there. Um, you know what they need, Father. You know exactly what's going on. Again, bind up their family. Give them all encouragement and support a peace to know that they're surrounded by a support group that can lift them up and encourage them. Oh, they got the Kyle family experiencing tremendous loss, a tremendous loss, a, a young life with so much ahead of her um, and, and the grandfather. Father, we just, only you know why this kind of stuff happens, and we just pray comfort and peace for the family. Again, just to have your angels camp about them and, and 
just let it be a testimony um, to the support that they have in their lives. Uh, Sister Dolores made known uh, family members experiencing physical pain. Father, whatever it could be, whatever it could be, just take it from them, deliver them from them. Father God, give them better quality of life, uh, a, a desire to, to get up and go again, and we just will praise you for it. We want to lift up Katie Whitbourne to you, Father God, this whole situation surrounding traveling arrangements, uh, all the things in her life, Father God, the, 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 the mental health uh, crisis that she struggles with sometimes, Father God, just deliver her, put the right people in her path that she can trust and build those uh, lanes up again, Father. And we lift up Sister Connie. Um, Father God, you said that you would, uh, that, that when you come, that there would be enmity between family and friends and, and workers and all that kind of stuff because of the way we live, Father God. And I just pray that whatever's going on in this situation, that you would uh, heal their hearts, heal their minds, let them get back together, Father God. Watch over Sister Connie, no doubt a, a broken heart as a mother to watch all of this turmoil go on. And we just lift her up to you right now and pray comfort and peace for all of this. Father God, again, we lift all these names up to you. You're the only one that can, Father. And we lay them at the cross right now. We ask that you would bless and anoint these situations. In Jesus' name we ask it. Everybody said, amen. Amen. On my way to heaven. We're going to sing a few more songs. If you feel moved to do so and stand up and join with us, we're going to try another uh, one of my favorite that we used to hear with uh, Pastor Ronnie would sing it for us. I'm going to do my best uh, to fill in some big shoes, but if you recognize the tune, sing along with us. Amen. <clears throat> Well, I'm on my way to heaven, my journey gets sweeter every day. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, all along the way. But well, my soul gets so happy, I shout and sing. Sweet. 
my journey gets sweeter every day. Let's keep on going. We're going to do a song that Miss Emily loves to do, and we love when she does it, and this is probably one of the last times that we're going to get to hear it for a while, besides Sunday. So let's, sorry. Here I am waiting, abide in me. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love. Bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's worthy. You could give him a praise offering. Go ahead and do it. Don't let me stifle any of that. You go right ahead. Let's do one more. The Lord Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. <laughs>
awesome power, and then we'll wrap it up. He has shown his awesome power. He has triumphed mightily. He's a victor over darkness and the grave. He has broke the chains that bound us. He has set the prisoner free. By his own great mercy, we last time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so awesome to see the growth. I'm having a good time up here. I know it's one of the last times we'll get to be, besides this Sunday, with, with Emily and Caitlin, both of them. We're going to miss them tremendously. Um, but it's just so awesome just to see the growth that I've seen in their lives and stuff like that. I'm excited they're leaving, but I'm also heartbroken, too. You all can be seated. Let's have a word of prayer before we do that. I apologize. I got out of line. Heavenly Father, continue to have your way here. I thank you for letting us praise and worship, Father God, and, and, and really move into the spirit of communion with you as we dig into your scripture, Father, your holy word. We just again ask that you would bless and anoint this time. Speak through my brother, Brian. Uh, Father God, give him the words that you've laid on his heart, Father. We give it all up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Thank you. <laughs> we certainly will. We certainly will. Love you, Brother Fowl. That was a All right, all right. Too much laughing, too much. No, I'm kidding. That's awesome, right? Um, what a great night, right? Awesome night to be able to be here and to be able to praise God and glorify to God. And I was sitting here going, I wonder where my wife's at. She always texts me, where's she at? Where's she at? Well, she's walking through the door now. So you can turn around, everybody say hi. Yeah, she has a nice little journey um, to try to get here for this time, especially when the kids go home late from, from getting picked up from daycare and things like this. So it, it's great that she's able to make that journey, come down, spend at least a half hour with us and be able to go back home, right? I praise God for that. Um, she's my rock and my support, so it kind of feels weird when she's not there and I deliver a message, right? It's like, where'd she go? Who do I focus at? Who can I point fingers at and, and know that they'll get pointed back at me, right? So I'm going to ask you this question. Because tonight is about questions that Jesus asked. Hmm. Think about that. Questions that Jesus asked. I want you to look at somebody, talk to somebody for just a second, and ask them just a general question. Like what mom and dad's name is, or where you were from, or one of those things. Just find somebody and, and just ask them that. Go ahead, real quick. Six four. All right. So, what were some of the questions that were asked? What was that? Do you like banana pudding? My answer would be yes. I love banana pudding. 
especially with like vanilla wafers on it. Oh my goodness, that's the favorite way to do it, right? So what's some other questions that were asked? Where were you born? Okay. Where were you born? Yeah. Okay. Pastor Rick asked how tall I was, and I said 6'4". used to be 6'5", but for some reason I'm shrinking. I'm not sure why. What's your name? You don't have a name tag on. Let's see. Ruth Ann Clark. Yay. I, got, I, I, I know her name. She asked me every time I see her to make sure I know her name, right? So Jesus was always asking questions, correct? Why are you so afraid? Why do you call me good? Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? Where is your faith? By one estimate, Jesus asked as many as 307 questions in the Gospels. And there was a lot more questions than there was answers. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening, for this great group of people that are here. Not only those that are present with us, those who are present with us online also to Heavenly Father. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit this evening to us, dear Lord. Let the words that come from my mouth be your words to Heavenly Father. And just be able to be uplifting to all those that are um, able to hear this message tonight, dear Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you for it all. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray it. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. So, why do you think there was more questions than answers? Because perhaps it's because when we ask ourselves questions... We grow. Think about little kids. Do they ever get to that stage of why? <laughs> why? Why? What did you mean? Why? What? What? Why? Why? Over and over. You can ask my wife, for the last 30 years we've had a daycare at the house, and there are, we've gone through many stages of why with many a kid, right? And we think about those questions and we grow. We're just not spouting off answers somebody else has given us. We own those answers. We know the, the question or the answer to that question, right? We know, like, how tall am I? I know I'm 6'4", but used to be 6'5". I know the answer to the banana pudding, yes, right? And you all know answers to different things that people would ask you. And if you were to go to work and somebody were to ask you, hey, you know, I know there's a secret recipe on how to make such and such. Do you know how to make it? Well, I've never made it before. Well, you've watched me. Well, not really. Well, I've heard you say it over and over and over again, but I've never put my hands to put it together. It's kind of like how Jesus' disciples were, right? He saw, they saw Jesus doing all these great miracles and all these different things, but they're like, how? What? What do you mean? How? There's no way I can do that, right? So I'm going to start with the first passage tonight, and it's from the book of Matthew, chapter 16. I've got like six or seven different passages, and they'll all be on the back wall, I think. Um, so Matthew, chapter 16, verses 15 through 19. It says, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? And this is Jesus speaking. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So who do you say that I am? It's the first thing that Jesus says in that. Who do you say that I am? So who do you say that you are? She says, I'm Ruth Ann Clark. He says, I'm Richard or Rick Curtis. Do you say that you're a child of God? Do you say that you're loved by God with everything that you are? 
Jesus asked this of his disciples when they were repeating what other people were saying about Jesus' identity. You know, who do you say that I am? They're saying, well, who do you think that Jesus really is? People are saying, well, he's the Messiah. That's awesome. That's great. That's fabulous. Or some people are saying, well, he's just a carpenter's son. He's just a guy that's pretending to be who he really is. Earlier, we were rehearsing, and for this, for this service on Saturday, um, there's one of my favorite songs, He's Alive. And it talks about, you know, the gates, the doors are barred, and the windows fastened down. I felt myself in sleepless and rose at every sound, right? Well, can you imagine all of Jesus' disciples? They're on watch. They're on guard. And they rose at every sound of anything that happened around Jesus. But they still questioned. They still are like, who are you? What do you mean? And as their ministry grew stronger and stronger together, they started to get their eyes open a little bit more, didn't they? They started to get their eyes open where they're like, oh, wow, look what Jesus is doing. Look at what Jesus has done and what he's continued to do. And I'll explain a little bit more of that as we go with this message. But people are saying about Jesus' identity, so much for what other people think, it's what you think. That's what counts. You have to know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. So move on up a couple pages to Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 through 34. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they all shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and, they touched their, uh, and he touched their eyes and immediately they received their sight and followed him. Jesus said to these blind people, what do you want me to do for you? What is it you want me to do? I'm already here, and you're like shouting out, Lord, 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 right? And, and he's like, well, what else do you want me to do? Well, basically, they wanted him to re, you know, re, redo his sight, their sight, right? To make their sight come back. So he had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and they were able to see. You know, Jesus didn't heal them until they said exactly what they wanted. Let me say that again. Jesus didn't heal them until they said exactly what it was that they wanted. So if I would ask you, what do you want right now? What would you say? Rain, Rain, okay. Perfect, right? If somebody say, what do you want right now? Just yell it out. Go ahead. Perfect. I love it. Hmm? A nap. That sounds fabulous. Yes. If you think about all these things and you're able to answer right then and there, but if Jesus were to put you on the spot and say, what do you want right now? What is it you want right now? You know what I would say? I want to go home. I want to go home to heaven. Wow. What an answer. What a question to really think about what Jesus was saying, right? Jesus didn't heal him until they really heard and said what they wanted. You know, prayer is a chance for us to say our needs. So what do we want? When we say our prayers, do we say, oh, Lord, just grant us a great, safe, happy day. Let the weather hold out. Let us be able to have a great day today. Keep us safe on the roads and all these other things. But do we really say, Lord, just be my Lord and Savior today? Do we ever say, just guide my hands and feet? Do we ever say that, God, you know, 
if it is my time to go today, it's going to be okay. Go ahead and take me home. Do we ever say these things? Some may say, oh, I say it every single prayer. And that's awesome. But there's other people in this world that struggle. They struggle to say what they really, really want. I've watched some of these documentaries on TV about people who are like trying to give a homeless person stuff. They'll walk up to them and say, hey, man, what is it you really need? Well, um, um, I really, um, like, it's okay. What is it you really need? Well, I'm really hungry. All right, let's go get you some food. And so they get them food and like, well, I'll just take a small cheeseburger and maybe a small drink of water. No, what is it do you really want? You can get whatever you want. Well, I'll take six Big Macs, two orders of fries, or, and a Diet Coke, right? I'm like, okay, go ahead. What else is it that you really need? Well, I really could use some new shoes. I really could use a new outfit. And so I've seen these people take these these homeless people into the stores or the homeless people are like, I'm not allowed to go back in there. Well, what size are you? So they go in and get the, go and get the clothing and all that stuff and they get changed and everything else and they're like, well, you know what, what else can I do for you? Well, I really, you know, could use a haircut or a shave or whatever. So they get them all cleaned up and at the very end of these videos, they hand them like a couple hundred dollars and said, hey, your life has just been changed. And in the name of Jesus, your life has been changed. So if we were to do this to every single person that you met and try to adhere to all their needs, would this world get any better? Absolutely. When Jesus was here on this earth, was he doing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle and trying to make this world better? Absolutely. His disciples were trying to be the hands and feet of Christ and doing what they were asked to do. And so they did what they could do. So what do you want me to do for you is what Jesus says in this passage. Let's move on to another question. Um, back up a little bit. I'm sorry, a little farther to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. Luke, chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. It says, Why do you call me Lord? Lord, and do not do what I say. I will show you what it is, is he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. So why do you call me Lord? Lord, and not do what I say. You know what we value most will be shown in our lives. We're an open book, right? At least we try to be. It is impossible to say, Lord, Lord, and truly mean it without following through, isn't it? It's like, Lord, just please help me today. And Lord, thank you for the bounties that you've given me this day. Whatever it is may be, and you don't follow through with it. Jesus is going to be like, well, why do you call me Lord when you aren't following what I ask you to do? Jesus, when he was here on this earth, what did he say that we were to do? Anybody remember? Seek first the kingdom, right? The kingdom of God. Go forth and what? Make disciples of all nations. So we're to be out, go out and be the hands and feet of Christ and, and do all these different things because God can help us through in so many, so many ways and all these different great things. So somebody asked me, I forget who it was, where'd she go? About the, the got the frog in the window. She here? Oh, there she is, right? About frog, about... Um, I just forgot what frog stands for. Fully rely, rely on God. I knew that. So she said, well, I don't need any more acronyms, but, you know, because my window is really small. And she bought this little frog. Well, let's go with the, the acronym of PUSH, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. 
Pray until something happens. And she's, I said, well, what do I, said, what do I use for it? Put it on my windowsill. So maybe somebody doing a push-up. She said, no, that makes me have to go to the gym then. <laughs> See, what happens before sermon is, is always get used in a sermon. So remember that, okay? But when you call Jesus Lord and you do not do what you, he, he says, then really you're not following and being in the hands and feet of Christ that he, God has called you to be, are you? You're not truly doing what God wants you to do. All of us here could go out into this world and I ask you to ask a simple question. Is standing in a line at, 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 a, at, at a grocery store or, or talking to your waiter or waitress or whoever it may be, ask them that question. Hey, where do you go to church? Oh, I really don't go to church or whatever it may be. And I went, you know, and things like this. I went and visited a friend of mine in, in the hospital this morning. He ended up having a minor stroke um, a couple days ago, but they're sending him home today and with little paralysis in his right hand, but otherwise than that, he's pretty good. And praise God for that, absolutely. But while he's in there, he's saying, well, you know what? I really feel good and all because of the glory of God. And I truly believe that God has healed me. And that's right with the two nurses over there. And the nurses are like, well, I truly believe that God healed you also. You never know who's going to listen and who's going to be, you know, admire those words that you have just said. You could have just said, well, well I've, you know, I've been healed. Thank God, you know. And they're like, oh, well, that's awesome. But he praised God for being healed. So we're going to back up a little bit into the book of Mark, chapter 8. Chapter 8, verses 19 through 21. It says, When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did we pick up? Twelve, they replied. They answered something. That's awesome, right? And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? And he stops right there. He doesn't continue to answer because he just answered by, do you not understand? So when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pick, uh, pieces did they pick up? Right. Jesus has performed this outstanding miracle. But have the disciples truly, fully noticed? Have they taken stock in what Jesus has done and what he continues to do? I'm going to ask you this. Have you taken stock in the miracles that Jesus has done in your life? We've all been through some traumatic things, I'm sure, in all of our lives. We've all thrown through some really highs and some really lows and all these different things. But have you taken stock in the miracles that Jesus has done in your life? Has Jesus given you stuff to eat when you didn't have anything to eat? Many, many years ago, I was at work and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get home. I got no gas in my car. Granted, I had a Volkswagen Beetle in it. You could push the thing, right? <laughs> and you just put your feet through the floors and, you know, like the Flintstone Mobile, right? But literally, it was on fumes. And when I drove it into, the, into work, it was like barely running. I'm like, Lord, I don't have any money. Bank account's broke. We're, we're broke. I'm not going to get paid for another three, four days. I don't know what to do. So I'm walking around outside, picking up truck, trash at work, and it was a windy day, and all of a sudden, something hit my leg. So granted, you reached down to pick it up. When I picked it up, it was a $50 bill. And I'm like, looking all over the place, because right next door was a bank, or a couple of doors down was a bank, and I'm like, looking over there to see if somebody might have missed it, and there was not a soul in sight. And I broke down to tears at that moment, I'm like, Lord, thank you. Now, granted, I did run out of gas pulling into the gas station. I still had to push the Volkswagen up to the gas pump 
took forever to get it restarted and things like this, but you know, God provided, didn't he? And I praise God for that miracle because those little miracles are things that you got to look for. I mean, $50 is $50, and it can go a long ways. And in those days, you know, gas was only a dollar or so a gallon, and it was like 10, ga- 10 gallons. So, I mean, I had enough money to get many a tanks of gas, right? God looks out for us, but we need to look out for God. We need to be that strong Christian he's called us all to be. So when we see these miracles happen around us, we need to what? Praise him for him, right? We need to glorify him for all these things. I'm going to have you um, turn to the book of John. Flip back a little bit. Or, yeah, forward, I should say. John chapter 21. Verse 15 through 7. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Well, yes, Lord. He said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And the third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? This time, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. So Jesus was asked, asked this question to Peter three times. And each time when the answer was, yes, the response was, feed my sheep. You know, talk is cheap, isn't it? But love is everything. So what do you do to show your love? What do you do to show your love for God? So a little bit of my background um, at year 30 of working for U-Haul, God is kind of telling me, hey, it's time. It's time to retire. It's stressed. That's where I lost all my hair at, I think. That's where I lost the inch of height, right? All these different things, and it was like, all right, it's time to leave. It's time to retire. But Lord, how am I supposed to retire? I can't I can't afford this, I can't afford that, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's going to be okay. Retire and I'm going to put you in full-time ministry. All right, so at the time I talked to my boss. And she put me on the full full track, speed ahead, right? That train was running. (laughs) And before I knew it, I was on my last day at at U-Haul. And I still didn't even know where I was supposed to go. But I had to trust God. I had to trust God that he had plans for me. He had plans for me and my wife and for my family and, and all these different things. I was like, all right, Lord, I love you. I trust you. This is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to go. This is how I'm going to be. And I, and I said, go for it. So my last day... The last minute, only thing I had to do was walk over and type my nut code in and hit out. That was my last time. I had used the same code for clocking in and clocking out for 30 years. 30 years, five to six days a week, clock in and out. I go up there, I hit out, and I could not remember my password. About 10 minutes later is when I finally remembered what the password was. I look back and I go, why did that happen? And I can remember the code now. And it's been a few years now. I could go in and clock back in. It's not there anymore, but I could clock back in, right? Or clock out, whatever it was. But at that moment, I could not clock out. 
Because when I clocked out, I immediately got in, the, in my truck and went home. But there was a friend of mine that worked out on the road that had not said bye yet. And it was in that 10 minutes time when he showed up and I was able to say goodbye. God puts those little things in our path to be able to go, oh, wow, here. And, you know, and I was able, because this gentleman that came up to me, almost every single day he stopped by me and we prayed for safety for him out on the road. So it wasn't just like a coincidence, you know, a person I worked with. It was somebody that I had grown really friendship with. But Jesus asked, do you love me? And if so, what are you going to do for God? What is it you're going to do? We're going to go one last passage. Book of Luke, chapter 10. Verse 25 through 28. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded, what is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus responded, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. So tonight, how do you inherit eternal life? How do you take all these questions, all these answers that we've talked about this evening, and I could go on for 300 and, 301 more times, right? We'd be here until next week at some point. But this is the most important question about eternal life. Brothers and sisters of Christ, I may just be talking and I may be rambling on, you know, telling life stories and all, but you know what? That's who I am. This is how God has me deliver messages. This is how God talk, has me talk to people. Growing up as a kid, if you were to ask me to come up here and give an oral report in, high, in school, from elementary school all the way through high school, I would have taken a failing grade before I would get up and front talk in front of anybody on a daily basis, every single class. I played in a high school Christian band and they would pass the microphones around and everybody would say their name and it came to me, I could not even say my own name because I was so scared to talk. No, I could play for hours on the guitar in front of hundreds of people with no problem, but I could not speak out loud. It wasn't until I finally said, yes, Lord, I'm listening. Yes, Lord, I accept that call. Yes, Lord, I'm going to be the hands and feet of Christ that you have called me to be until I was able to do what I'm doing now. But even when I first started delivering my message, I would write it out and it would be up here on pages and I'd be holding on for dear life and I was like, oh boy, how do I turn the page? And so it was life lessons like, well, don't, this is my whole message. You see what's here. Don't write it out, is what God told me. Study about it. Use life lessons. Use these things and be able to help other people. So my question is for you is, how do you know that you're going to have eternal life in heaven? How do you know? Do you ever question that in your mind? Do you ever take that moment in your life and you go, wow, um, I don't know, do I? Do I really know if I'm going to heaven or not? Well, brothers and sisters of Christ, if you accepted that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you know that he died on the cross and rose again for the forgiveness of each and every one of your sins, I'm going to be at that gate welcome you there because we're all going to get to heaven, aren't we? It's going to be an awesome thing. But if we look at this final question, 
What must I do to inherit eternal life? There's so many people in this world that say they have to do this, they have to do this, they have to, have to, have to. And it's not about actions, it's about belief in Jesus Christ. Now we love that when your hands are feet and you'd love to come out and help with other people, uh, you know, and all these things and love on everybody and, and all these things, but we need to love on God and praise God for everything. So these are some of the questions that Jesus has asked. And these are some of the questions that we may ask when we get to heaven. And so when you're around and the kid next time, they're saying, why, why, why? Don't worry about answering that same question over and over. Because when we get to heaven, we're all going to go, why, why, why? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Wow, look at that. Why is this way, that way, and all these things? So love on God. Praise God with everything and anything that happens in your life. From the greatest things to the worst things. And God will bless you. And you will inherit eternal life with him when you are his hands and feet of Christ in all that you do. Amen. So we don't have a closing song, but I thought maybe we could do a chorus of Amazing Grace if we could all just sing it a cappella. All right? I'm going to turn the mic off because you don't want to hear me sing over this mic, okay? <laughs> but if you all just maybe um, just kind of stand up and sing with us Amazing Grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for all those questions that were asked, for all those answers that you provided for us, dear Lord, for all those things in our lives when we go, what just really happened, and you provided that answer for us, dear Lord. Let us be able to go from this place this evening, renewed and refreshed, and just be able to have those questions on our hearts and our minds and our souls and be ready for when it comes time for us to go to heaven, dear Lord to be able to be ready, to be able to praise you forever to Heavenly Father. So let us be able to just glorify you this day. Keep us all safe on our journeys home and just be able to praise your name each and every moment of everything that we do. So go in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, our true Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.